Deputy uh, Luke Flanagan. Um, uh, thank you for coming here today. Uh, the first question uh, I just want to know the answer to. What percentage of GSOC is uh, made up of former members of the Garda Síochána? Uh, we did some work on our investigators just recently, and, and we are over, I think, 60 to 70 per cent independent investigators. Okay, the question was asked earlier about was there any um, expertise within the organisation into covert surveillance? Would it not be reasonable to assume that if you have two thirds of your staff as former members of the Gardaí, that it would be amazing that none of them would have any past in surveillance? Or two thirds? Or oh, was it one third? I think, uh, Sorry, could, I could I say that we have a staff of about 85 uh, at the moment? We're unfortunately carrying some vacancies. Uh, less than 40 of the staff are investigators because we would have case workers, we would have information, librarian, administrative staff as well. So our investigative cohort would be under 40. And of that group, about five of our investigators uh, have been Gardaí in the past. Have you inquired uh, as to whether any of those staff have uh, expertise in the area of surveillance? Because if you're trying to find the root of the problem, these are questions that would obviously be asked. Questions I, I would definitely think I'd ask. As, as former uh, Gardaí and sergeants and so on, as uh, former detectives, I would imagine, Deputy, that they would have the full range of um, policing experience. They would, they would have come to our office through competitive interview process. So and you would have within your organisation people who would have knowledge of uh, the, this sort of uh, surveillance. Then. So um, uh, it is, from what I know anyways, uh, it seems to be common knowledge that uh, there are, is a history of leaking stuff to the press from members of the Gardaí Síochána. I'm proof of it. And um, uh, would that not worry you that one third of your staff are formerly members of the Gardaí Síochána, who the public, from uh, the public I talk to anyways, uh, know that there's a history of leaking? Uh, would this not be a major concern to you? And uh, to me, it seems like it's amazing that uh, former members of the Garda Síochána are investigating former colleagues at all. And that, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to put a slight on any individual, whether that be former postmen investigating current postmen, or former midwives investigating current midwives. I'm not putting a slight on midwives or postmen. The problem is, how is anyone going to uh, see any credibility in a system where former colleagues are investigating uh, a other, basically investigating the guards. Like. Sorry, I, I, yes, let's be very clear, I've got confidence in every single one of our staff, as has the members of the Commission. Um, some of the members that were former members of the Ongarda Shea Khan have been with us uh, many years. Did you say you had confidence in all your members of staff? All my members of staff have confidence in them. Except the ones who well, the ones who potentially delete. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's see. Let's see where an investigation might take comment. us. Excellent Let's take it where the let's see where the investigation might might take us. I'm also uh, very clear that um, in the period that we've been in this commission, uh, we are very proud and talking to our other oversight uh, agencies across England, Wales, Scotland, uh, that we have been able to bring through people uh, with a non-police back background. Uh, we've been able to train them properly uh, and they are now exercising powers and doing investigations and I think the record that we have and the sort of statistics we've got in terms of bringing people through uh, that route uh, is, has been excellent and I hope that uh, that will be seen uh, by the Irish people of another, another uh, ish, indication of our independence. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, another question. Uh, will GSOC be responding to the four demands of the Garda Commissioner in his press statement on Monday? And will this correspondence be published? And just to give you a bit of a background to it, both the Taoiseach and the Minister said yesterday that GSOC should give these answers at the hearing of the Committee today. Now, that was obviously inappropriate of them. They cannot instruct the GSOC to do anything. And GSOC is not answerable to the Garda Commissioner, as far as I knew, anyway. It's kind of worrying that he's come out with this. It's meant to be the 
other way around. Now, the Commissioner's four demands are, one, the nature and extent of the anomalies identified by the UK Security Consultancy. Two, do these anomalies amount to a security breach and is a criminal offence suspected? Three, the basis for suspicion of Garda misconduct. And four, whether any matters identified now require investigation by the Garda Shekhan. Now, I, to be quite honest, I'm not uh, interested whether you answer those or not. Uh, what I'm interested in is like uh, how, it, it, it is question so you need to have answers. oh yeah yeah but like I, no I, I have a question uh, around the whole thing like how can GSOC work when we have the guard the commissioner in public ordering you to do things and also I personally think that you don't need to have a good relationship, a bad relationship, an indifferent relationship to be with consistent. the Commissioner. We need a question, not yeah, yeah, no, to be there consistent. There is a question no, coming I, out I, of this. Well, let's get I to actually it. don't think you need to have a relationship. Why do you need to have a relationship with someone that you could potentially be investigating? And why are you having private conversations with someone you could potentially be investigating? Because public confidence is not helped by that. When the chairman responds, your time is... Uh, so you can take okay. one more question now if you want. Right. Do, you want do you want to avail of another question? Are you happy enough? Uh, I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, I spent two hours with the uh, Commissioner uh, uh, the other day uh, where we uh, went through the whole range of issues that have come up uh, in, in relation to this particular investigation. Uh, I don't think it's in any way seen that uh, uh, the head of an organisation that we have uh, ties with and also that we have to have cooperation with is asking questions of, of us as an oversight agency. Which is asking questions by who? asking questions of us as an oversight agency uh, and we have no problem answering your questions today. Um, I think it is right that you have a relationship uh, with the uh, organisation that we will investigate. I think it is right that that, that a relationship is appropriate. I think it is right that that, invest that, that relationship, that, if that, that, that uh, relationship has healthy tensions, which we can see we have, uh, I would say to you uh, that um, you know, we have moved forward uh, considerably on some of the issues that we've had to report to this committee in the past. And uh, I think that the conversation I had with the Commission the other day uh, and the fact that we agreed that we uh, would, um, would, would be very much saying that we need to move forward past this particular crisis, I think is a good thing in relation to this issue. Is this issue. We've got some other very important work that we need to get to, get to and get on with in the future. Okay, the final question is Deputy Thomas Springle. 